This is Rick's case number 644 that I thought we would use as an example to help with your developing better pattern recognition. The case was a maxillary second bicuspid with some sort of resorptive defect present. I was blinded to what was used here as far as the instrumentation and irrigation, so I have no idea what was done. I got the tooth in multiple pieces and apicals. It was hard to make sense of where all the pieces came from, so I divided it into labeled sections. That's section B, but we're going to do section C in this tutorial. Here is the section C, and we'll use the stitched imaging approach to see if we can't improve our pattern recognition. So this is the sputter-coated sections. It looks like a very granular surface. There wasn't any visible pulp anywhere in the canal, and when you go into it under low power, it looks like it was just completely clean dental tubules. And now, looking at the stitched area, you can see that it looks just as it would ex as you would expect predentin to look without any pulpal soft tissue present. Using the stitched approach lets you actually do a survey of the canal and get a global sense, a holistic sense of what was there. And when you go into a little bit higher power, also using the stitch technique, you can see that you're looking at predentin here missing any smear layer or pulpal instrumentation debris at all, and certainly no evidence of any kind of bacterial contamination. And you see some areas of mineralization where you're looking at the pre-dentin there. The mineralized tissue has the smooth, melted butter look to it. So you see a partially mineralized pre-dentin layer, and here you can see some remnants of the pulpal tissue layer, probably pulpal cells still present. Now I'm going to cut to a previous tutorial on mineralization that might help be helpful to review. Examine more closely. Let's pretend that we're looking at the mineralization front right where that square is. And all of the predentin other than in that square is gone. What would we actually see? And if you're in relatively young dentin in the coronal part, this is what you'll actually see. You'll see this globular dentin. And what you're really seeing here is you're seeing all the missing parts of the proteoglycans and non-collagenous proteins that are part of the predentin that are missing. They're missing on account of the specimen preparation techniques utilized. So you're looking at this globular dentin. For example, if you look at my arrow here, you're looking north at that mineralization front, right at the level where the predentin is partially calcified. And the predentin south of that is gone. So, so now, when we go in and we looked at the higher powers, maybe this will make more sense to you. There you can see the predentin. It doesn't look like a lot of decalcification has been done. This is just what dentin looks like after the use of sodium hypochlorite. All of the proteoglycans look like they've been dissolved away, and there is some partial mineralization that's taken place as predentin is in an incremental mineralization process all the time. The melted butter appearance is the mineralization. I really don't see any evidence of any bacterial contamination. And now this is the newer stitched way of looking at it where it's a lot easier for me to prepare this. And I think you still get a pretty good global sense of what it is you're looking at here. And you're looking at predentin that has had a lot of the proteoglycan and non-collagenous proteins removed by the bleach, but very little demineralization that's taken place. So I hope this helps you in your pattern recognition on these samples. I'll cover the other sections of the tooth next.